Hello, this is Bruce Wallenberg, and this is an introduction to our online video course, Power Generation, Operation, and Control. That is also the title of a book that I've been associated with. Power Generation, Operation, and Control has three authors, Alan Wood, Bruce Wallenberg, and Gerald Shebley. This is a picture of the cover of the third edition, which came out in 2013. Let's start with the very basics of a, of a power plant. And here we have a power plant. We can picture that we have smoke coming from this smokestack. And when you have a power plant, in order to get any power out, you have to put fuel in. Fuel costs money. So what we've, what we've shown here is the fact that fuel costs so many dollars per ton or dollars per barrel, dollars per cubic foot of gas. Um, power output is in megawatts, regardless of the fuel input. The more megawatts, the more fuel per hour that you have to put into the unit. The general way of looking at this is so many um, dollars can translates to so many megawatt hours of energy that the power plant puts out. Here's a problem that we call the economic dispatch problem. Suppose we have three generators here and they're all going to supply power into the same power system so that their their output is is summed and then goes into a single load. Well, if that's the case, how do we determine which power plant puts out how much power? The idea could be, okay, each gets one-third. Well, why not 40%, 40%, and 20%, and so forth? So you have this problem of determining how much to, uh, to put out. And the answer is that we're going to take the sum of all the costs of supplying these three plants, the sum of the costs, and minimize that cost. So it is called economic dispatch. The word dispatch to the power uh, system operators and power engineers simply means how much output comes from each generator. So the word dispatch, you could say, is, a, is another word for allocation. This is a picture of the load on a power system. Now you'll notice that the load goes up. Here's uh, the, we've, we've plotted 168 hours. So we go up on Sunday but back down. Monday the load gets to be a higher load. Tuesday it gets even higher. Wednesday's about the same. Thursday's higher and Friday is the peak load of the week and then it goes back down again on Saturday. And this, re this pattern repeats, not exactly, but it repeats more or less week after week. Notice also that the, the load starts out low. Let's say this is about three or four in the morning um, and, the, and the, load goes, the load goes up, reaches the peak, and then it comes back down. Of course, this is because people begin to get up in the morning, turn on their lights, their stove, their toasters, their television. Then they go to work, more lights, more air conditioning or heating units, equipment running in factories, and it reaches a peak in the afternoon. And then it begins to go down at night as people go home. When they go to bed, they turn lights and televisions, etc., off, and the load goes back down. So this is very, very common all over the world to have the load go through peaks like this. The patterns are different. They're different at different times of the year. They're different in different locations, but they're similar in that they go from a, a low to a high during the, the day, and that, that, that peak time varies, um, especially de depending on whether it's an air conditioning uh, season or heating season, and then it goes back down. The, the point that I'm making here is that we need to give enough generation to meet that peak, but we, we also have to, to realize that the load itself, because it's going up and down, we need a lot of generators up here, and we need to take some of the generators offline, otherwise they don't operate efficiently. So for the sake of economics, we 
put a lot of generators on here we take them off we put them back on that process that process is called unit commitment and it just means putting generators on and offline here's another type of power system where in the top here we have we have a river and so we have water coming into a reservoir it goes through the generators in the, the first or the highest uh, facility flows down the river into another reservoir flows through that res that that facilities generators into another reservoir and finally it comes out of the final set of generators and down here into a river that eventually dumps the water into the sea into the ocean at sea level now we have to be very careful how we schedule how we schedule these reservoirs you don't want to run these these so fast that we fill this reservoir up down here if we do we will end up spilling the water that's what this S stands for if we spill the water we waste energy we literally can't get any energy out of it that that energy is gone to us anyway so we don't want to spill unless that's just a uh, an absolute necessity if there's so much water we have to spill sometimes and the the, the um, impoundments, the, the dams are, are constructed so the water can usually go over the top or around a spillway around the side. Here's another one down here where we have, we have an oil tank and the oil tank is filled from a pipeline. There's pumps bringing oil into the tank. So let's say we start out at a certain point with a, a full tank and we're using the oil um, let's say during the week we're drawing that tank down, we're drawing it down. What we don't want to have happen is that we draw it down to the point where on a peak day like Friday, let's say, we don't have any oil in the tank. We'll have to shut this, this plant down and then we can't get any power out. So scheduling this storage tank is another one of these kind of problems. So there's, there's, a, there's a special problem of, of scheduling when you have storage, either fuel storage or water in the case of a hydro system, these get very complex with, with uh, transportation delivery systems if you're using oil pipelines, railroads, etc. And it gets very, comp very, very complicated for hydro systems when you're scheduling the, uh, the operation of rivers. So once again, the, there's a large economic effect from the operation of the generators, the economic dispatch, scheduling the generators, unit commitment, hydro scheduling, and fuel scheduling. Now that takes care of uh, the generation uh, side, but we also have transmission systems. Here are three generators on, on these three buses designated by these circles. This one is putting out um, 200 uh, megawatts right here this one is putting out 50 and this one is putting out 50 they're supplying loads that have values of 100 100 and 100 and they supply those loads through what we call the transmission system we have not shown in this pictorial uh, the transformers and the substations and so forth but we're just showing a transmission line from one bus to another this is this is a bus uh, uh, in the parlance of, of power systems. Now I want you to note that uh, one of the there's there's a couple of issues that we have to, to, to be aware of and that is that the the lines themselves we have to be very careful that we don't put so much power through the line uh, that it literally heats up and um, it, 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 it metallic strength is lost, it starts to sag, it may sag down low enough so that we get arcing to the ground and so forth, that, and, and it may lose some of its metallic properties when you let, let it cool back down. So there are limits to the flow of the lines. There's also limits to the voltage uh, that, we can, that we can use on the, on the bus. So I'll, I'll just put V with an absolute value sign because it's an AC. So this is the magnitude of the bus voltage. It has to be uh, less than, um, it has to come between two limits. There's an upper and lower limit. You don't want it to get, usually you're more concerned about low voltage, but you also don't want it to be too high. 
And finally, we also have the, the following problem where if we have a line outage, of what we call a forced outage, simply means that the, uh, the line is opened by something that uh, we didn't schedule and we didn't plan for it, such as a lightning strike, such as a, an insulator breakdown someplace. Um, if this had a transformer in series with it, perhaps there was an internal fault in the transformer. In any event, uh, what I've shown here by these X's means this line opens. That's called a contingency. If the contingency opens that line, all the flow from that line ends up flowing on other lines. It finally still gets to the loads. But other lines now are more heavily overloaded. And what we don't want is that when that one went out, we all put a dashed line here, indicates that this line perhaps is now overloaded because of the first lines uh, opening up. And this is called contingency analysis or um, more properly security analysis. So operations must take into account transmission system. All lines and transformers um, must be within limit, so flows within limit. Bus magnitudes uh, must be within limit. First contingency um, uh, loading, meaning the, the, the loading after an outage uh, will, will not result in any flow or voltage uh, limits either. Um, violations must be corrected and, and there are various ways to do this, usually by, by changing the pattern of generation. It goes off of economic dispatch. They must be corrected in real time, must be corrected as fast as we can. And last of all, um, the, the economic dispatch uh, must account for uh, the the transmission losses. If you're uh, if you're into if you're an electrical engineer, this is the the I squared R. Those losses that cause the lines to heat up. There's a small uh, but yet significant enough amount of loss, and we don't actually eliminate all the losses. We can't, but we can we can eliminate uh, minimize their economic uh, effect. Um, very briefly, this is the uh, uh, picture here of the um, the matrix for an optimal power flow, and we cover in the in the text in, in the chapter on optimal power flow how to build an optimal power flow that um, um, models the the power system inside. So that's the first set of uh, of constraints in our matrix. And then it takes account of all the flows in the matrix and the network so that none of them overload. And last of all, we put constraints in that represent those first contingency flows. This is called a security constrained optimal power flow. We show how that's done in the OPF chapter of the book. This is a very uh, fairly complex diagram, but the idea is to say that uh, we cover a lot of the applications that go into uh, the online control systems for the power company. The, the telemetry that, that is brought in that measures status, meaning open and close data on, uh, on generator, on, pardon me, on uh, breakers, um, and the analog measurements of flows, voltage, current, and that goes into what we call a state estimator, which tells us exactly what's happening around the system as far as the the voltage phase angles, the, the flows, and so forth. And then we show in this diagram the economic dispatch. We show contingency analysis and security constrained OPF, how they all fit together in this, uh, in this diagram here. So this is an overview of a power system uh, control center. Uh, we have a chapter in the book on the control of generation. This is a simple diagram here which, which talks about the, uh, the AGC logic, uh, uh, pardon me, the, the AGC logic for, for the ACE. ACE stands for Area Control Error, which is these, these, the uh, basic control mechanism that we use to drive uh, generation up and down in response to load changes, in response to generation outages and so forth, we, and it consists of a, 
a weighting of frequency difference from standard frequency and flows differencing from scheduled net interchange and this is the, the diagram that shows how we allocate it economically and send pulses either raise and lower pulses or actual set points control system set points to the generation to the to the control systems at the generating plants last of all we have a chapter on demand forecasting really short-term demand forecasting what I want to emphasize here is the forecast intervals and um, you notice that uh, we've kind of spaced them out here we go from five second intervals this would be for automatic generation control so we have to we have to actually sample the system and and send out uh, control system changes on, a, on about a five second sometimes it's two second sampling uh, some of these for economic dispatch go up to 30 seconds all the way down here to fuel and and um, and hydro scheduling where um, we were looking at uh, uh, horizons of many weeks or even six months if you're if you're dealing with a hydro system and fuel scheduling that act that even can go out for many years so this is the the idea behind and uh, we 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 hope that uh, you enjoy this course the course uh, uh, you, you get the lectures off of the same uh, off of our website which is located at the University of Minnesota and we hope that uh, your learning and your uh, uh, your awareness of power system operations is um, is greatly enhanced thank you very much